welcome back to Build Tune Race. Last night we got the engine installed and today we're working on rear ends, I think. So we got this new Ford 9-inch from Quick Performance. The old one's still over there. I ended up deciding no sense in cutting up and only using part of it and then having part of it lay around. Sell that to somebody that wants to put it in an F-body, ready to go bolt it in. So I ordered up a whole new one and we're about ready to get this thing opened up and see what we got. All right, we'll try to get this thing out of here. Alex is over, AJ's actually over. I grew up with AJ. He's actually help helping at Free Car Event and all that stuff. So he's like, need some let's help. Over. Let's, let's come work on this thing. So we're gonna try to get this box off. It had 9 million staples in it. So we're just gonna try to slide it off. Uh, unwrap it from this. See how many fingers here? Put your rear end housing. I don't think we need those where we're going. We are gonna need those where we're going. There's the housing. I think we have axles and then the rear center section. Is so good. So went ahead and pulled the axles out. Part of the upgrade as well was to go to full 40 spline stuff. A little bit stronger. Told the guys, you know, about 1,800 horsepower. They're like, yeah, you might want to upgrade from 35. So that was another reason why going with a whole new setup, new axles, and then with new axles, need a new center section. Also salty was an eighth mile. I had a 390 rear gear, and now we got a 30 rear gear. Yep, I said that right, 30 rear gear. So this thing is gonna cruise down the highway real, real nice. It even comes with the Menards bucket. And there it is, a new 3.0 rear gear, 40 spline, a whole new setup for Salty, and this should help us really go down the highway real nice. Uh, with the transmission being like gonna be a Turbo 400 with a 210 first, do a whole bunch of starting line ratio, math, and all these things, and you know, there's no perfect situation, but like the Buick has a 325 rear gear. Even Mincer told us with the shocks, we might be getting a little aggressive. Well, and I want this thing to really drive down the road nice. I want no reason to not go cruise this thing down the highway at 75. So there we go. A 30 rear gear will really help Salty with cruising down the highway at real nice speeds and also help the starting line ratio. Maybe not perfectly ideal down track. I think overall, it's gonna make the car much more enjoyable and we should still easily be able to go the times that we want with it. I actually need to make a modification to this. The coil over bracket mounts for the Viking coil overs work on this one so i just got to make a little, drill a little hole to get this mounted up there like that that side's done that's in the process alex and aj are working on prepping all the front control arms to be painted so we can start working on the front suspension got the rear end sitting in here kind of sort of but to be able to mock up for the anti-roll bar where I need to weld the little brackets on we really need to put everything on here so we're gonna go ahead and take the new Midwest chassis short and torque arm and torque arm mount that is now back where the uh, drive shaft loop is at put that in the car so we get everything mocked up we got the rear end all the way in there and then just going to pull it back out so we can paint it I was going to try to tack on the anti-roll bar mounts but really the car needs to be all the way down at weight I mean, it's close, but I don't really want to guess. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint it and then I'll clean off a little spot, weld the tabs and repaint just where the anti-roll bar is. That's how I installed the first time in this thing. Uh, Alex getting everything taped off. We're going to go ahead and paint this thing up and then put it back in. So we got the rear end all ready for some paint. I love using this like epoxy VHT paint. This stuff works super good. It's what I used on that. Years later, it still looks all pretty good. Get a door crack and we have some ventilation. It's nice warm in the shop. So I like to leave it warm in the shop so this stuff can clear. After the 10 million time of going to the hardware store, we got some hardware to put the front struts in. I'm finishing painting the rear end over here. Kind of getting everything going on. I'll probably start putting the studs in the housing. When you pull something apart, you usually lose some hardware. This stuff's old. It's old from the clear and everything else. So we've been trying to put all new hardware in. Box is working those in there. We got the front knuckle painted. We actually just got back from O'Reilly's ordering some new front hubs so we can put new wheel bearings. This car had like 150,000 miles on the chassis when I picked it up. So I think it's time to put some fresh bearings up front. And we'll uh, get this side popped in too. Oh, yep. How nice. I'm still digging the elbow. That big old elbow. All right, guys, so there's pretty much the rear end. I spent the last little while being popped by the Sailor Man and putting all of the studs in here. Uh, trick of the trade, because I did the first few real rough, is you take some of these nuts that come in the quick performance kit, thick spacer, a couple washers, use some of this like assembly loop stuff. I was able to tighten these in to where it draws those studs into the housing, so that's looking real, real good. While I was doing that, Alex and AJ got all the front suspension pretty much assembled. We're waiting for our new hubs. We got to look up all the torque specs and assembly setup on that. 
With this being all the new adjustable upper and lower control arms, we don't even know a starting spot, so we probably gotta get it on there and just kinda leave everything loose and then eyeball it and then take it to get an alignment. So now we're just going to go ahead, raise the car back up, get the rear end hanging in there. We'll end up doing the final assembly on it. All right, so now we're gonna try and get it hung in here, possibly for the last time until this thing's running, hopefully. The final assembly of parts is nice because then you know you're getting closer to the end. and put the shock mounts on that we we're supposed to do before we hung it, but we're good now. There it is. New quick performance nine inch. Rear end, it's an insult thing, not 100%. It definitely a whole lot closer than we were at the beginning of the day. So we're back at it, got a gasket from O.O. O'Reilly's, got some gasket maker, this stuff is the best, that's right stuff, but either way I think you always end up with some sort of a rear end leak out of this thing. So I put a little bit of gasket maker both sides and I'll still end up with a leak, but at least I feel better about it. And now we'll take the new 3.0 rear end gear, lift it up in there, set it into place. We'll just probably try to start with the, the bottom stud and then we'll roll it into place. Okay. Fingers to the top. Well, after beating the crap out of our wood. We got it on. I'm just using these nuts to pull it down now. I'm gonna assume whenever I tighten all the studs, you know, if each one's just a little off, you know, and then the housing's just a hair off or whatever, you're gonna fight that. So bring them all down. Hopefully they'll all kind of square up so then we don't fight this that bad. And maybe it's a lot smarter to put it together on the ground or whatever, and then put it in the car. Either way, it's starting to come together. Uh, it's kind of a pain, but we, we got it. It's just, if they're not perfectly centered and setting on those, uh, studs it's not going to slide on there so we uh we had to work it and hit it with the wood and hammer kind of in this corner that corner this hand, corner that corner there but now it's it's sitting on there so just drawing it all down and then we'll put the final uh nylon nuts that came with it on and then we should be good to go in the housing at least the center section will be in this thing so we got all this torque down i think that was 35 foot pounds with the nylon nuts uh, and then went ahead and installed the new torque arm on here and everything's just loose but installed and uh yeah so it's looking pretty good with the new shortened torque arm on here new rear ends in it alex grabbed the other axles and we're gonna go ahead and throw the studs in those and then we will get them installed in here and then we'll almost have a new rear end installed in this thing here's everything that came in the bag you got your studs and then you got your nut that goes on the wheel side, your spacer if you need it, and then your lock nut that goes on the back side of it. So there's everything that's set up. Here's kind of the axle setup. You take a stud and start threading them into here. And then uh, once you get it threaded all the way in and through, you put the nylon nut on the back side, and then that will install the studs. That's all installed. Got them on there. Now we just gotta slide them into the housing. Ooh. Try to see what happens. Alex is gonna do the honors. Gotta find the teeth. Oh, yep. Now just line up the bearing. How are we doing? Ooh, that looks good. And now driver's side is in. So not too bad. Slid right into their new home. And now we got pretty much the rear end completely installed in the car, minus adding the rear brakes to it. But we got a really cool package from Willwood that I showed you guys way back. We're finally gonna get around and install those things. So if you wanna see that video, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. It really helps push this out to new people. I hope you enjoyed watching the install of the quick performance rear end. Huge shout out to those guys for getting it to us super, super fast. And we'll see you guys in the next video.